Today's flashback takes us back to 1986 when Denise DiCenzo was a newcomer to Channel 3. She sat down with legendary actor Paul Newman to talk about his new venture, Helping Children. Good evening, everyone. I'm Denise DiCenzo. It's not often that Paul Newman gives interviews, but I had the opportunity to sit down and talk with the famous actor. He invited us to meet him in Westport, his hometown, because he has a special project. It's his camp for terminally ill children he has established in conjunction with Yale New Haven Hospital. To make it happen, he has to raise money from the public, corporations, his fans. So we talked. In the next half hour, you'll join me in that conversation about his reasons for starting the project, about his latest movie, his long-standing marriage, his auto racing. It's a rare look at one of America's most famous and popular actors. Now, you're not going to see Fast Eddie Felsen, Butch Cassidy, Hud, or any of his other characters. You will meet a modest man who values his privacy, but who indeed has strong opinions and interesting comments. We begin our talk with how the idea of the camp came about. I don't think it came about um, at any particular moment. It's, it's kind of like a, a, a great acting experience, the community experience, and you never know where the idea gets started and then all of a sudden you just see it on film and it's on there and it just... Uh, my father died when he was 57 from cancer and my mother died from cancer and and I've lost some friends along the way and when I passed my 60th birthday I... Uh, I reminded myself that that was quite a privilege and uh, it, imagine... Uh, and I thought back and thought, well, if you're eight years old and it's right down the pipe, and you, you don't have that opportunity. And I don't know, it was just something that happened one morning. And How long ago was that? Well, I think it's been gelling for a couple of years now. What will it be like? Describe it for us. Well, in uh, doing my homework, I was, I was bewildered by the kind of... Uh, hospital atmosphere in some of these places that are supposed to be outdoors and I knew right away that that wasn't going to work and I went back in my head to the hole in the wall gang from Butch Cassidy and and uh, even I remember my camp experiences which were way back in the Stone Age you wouldn't even, you weren't even born then but uh, and I remembered how special that was because it was of the period and this is going to be closer to a turn of the century Oregon lumber camp than it's going to be to anything that anybody's ever seen before. Western decor? Well, it's going to have the smell of the West to it, yeah. The camp, called Hole in the Wall Gang, will be located on 300 acres in northeastern Connecticut on the Ashford-Eastford town line. Planned in cooperation with Yale New Haven Hospital, the camp is designed to offer desperately ill children a camping experience once reserved only for healthy kids. In Ashford, initial reaction is mixed. I'm just proud that he's even coming to this town. That's a tax-free proposition. We don't, we're going to lose taxes on that property for one thing, and I still have to know from the selectmen or what, how we're going to benefit by it. How do you respond to some Ashford residents who are concerned that they're going to lose property taxes on this, on the sale of this land and the land being used as a camp? What, what would you say to them? Well, I'll say that they'll not only get it back in, in if not more in terms of actual dollars, but in terms of uh, a sense of community pride, I don't even think that's measurable. There are a lot of charities that are looking for money, and there are some charities who say, why don't you give to us and we'll put that money into research so we can find a cure for these diseases. What kind of argument would you make that there is really a need for a camp for kids who are terminally ill? I don't think you can pump more money into research right now. Uh, it's like, uh, uh, well, you, you find in some cases that money is simply thrown at a problem. Money now in some 
and the enforcement aspect is being thrown at the, at the drug problem. I don't think that, that money that's being thrown in that direction is going to be very effective, but that's another story. Uh, there is no facilities now, uh, permanent f facilities for children with life-threatening diseases. Uh, that's out there to be developed and to be uh, uh, pursued and experimented with. Why Connecticut? I live here. It's my home. I, I live here. I live in New York, but I really live in Connecticut. And Connecticut is home base for Newman's fundraising efforts. Half the $8 million cost of the camp is coming from the profits of Newman's own, salad dressing, popcorn, and spaghetti sauce, a food line the actor says he started on a whim. Whenever I, I get restless, uh, I try to keep myself off balance, and I thought that getting into the food bottling business was about as as uh, I don't know, there was something deliciously tacky and irreverent about putting my face on a bottle of salad dressing. And of course the only way that the, that the two of them would work together is if, if whatever proceeds they were, and at that time I think we thought that there'd be about 30 bucks at the end of the year that, uh, that we would give that money to some local charity or something. And, it was back in 1982 when Newman and Westport neighbor author A.E. Hotchner began the venture. It's now turned into a booming business. Newman's own has generated $9 million in profits, and all of it goes to charities. The Hole in the Wall gang camp will get $4 million. In order to proceed, Newman by law must raise another $4 million from individual and corporate sources. I'm in an unusual and uncomfortable position of going out and hustling for for things and for asking for contributions from foundations and from corporations and from individuals, which is something that I is not a it is a new experience for me, and uh, I guess I'll like it when I see the camp. The camp became so successful. Denise, by the way, was so proud of that interview. We put the entire half hour special on our website right now and on our YouTube channel. We thank you so much for watching Face the State this Sunday. CBS Sunday Morning with Jane Polly is coming up next. Have a great day, everybody.